Over the last year or more, there's places that are adapting to and integrating and celebrating the use of te reo Māori, and Radio New Zealand being one of them, uh, churches. Um, there's, a, there's lots of places where institutions, universities, whatever, where it's quite normal now to be greeted in te reo and to have a Māori kōpapa way of uh, welcoming new staff, farewelling old staff, etc. Yet at the same time, there's this reaction of people who are worried that the democratic principle of one person, one vote, with Māori being a minority, suddenly getting majority share or majority say in in certain areas of, of New Zealand life and politics. And there's this worry, and, and this is a, a drum beaten by uh, certain political parties as well. What's your thoughts on this? Well, there's, there's a lot of fear-mongering going on. There's no question about that. And for people who haven't joined this journey, it is pretty upsetting to mm-hmm. suddenly find that they're on a bus where their seat at the front might actually be challenged and that they might have to share a seat in the third row or the tenth row. So I understand the anxiety for people uh, who, who, haven't, who haven't been part of the journey and there's no easy way around this other than getting on board. Mm. But the fact of the matter is that this thing called co-governance is, is not anything to be frightened about. The, the Anglican Church's constitution became a co-governance constitution back in 1992. And the, and the net effect of that, of making sure that the Maori voice and the Pacifica, but the Maori voice was equal to the Pākehā voice, the net result of that was that there was a whole lot less scrapping and fighting and divisions and mm. all of the stuff that used to go on before that was in place. So... The people who have tasted and experienced Mm -hmm. co-governance in terms of how to run a church, how to run a museum, how to run a school, how to run a university, Mm -hmm. how to run a national park, how to manage a river, the people who have had the experience of that, and there are hundreds of people, Mm -hmm. thousands of people, who who do co-governing every day of the year, Listen to their testimony, and it's not a testimony about fear and intimidation and being overwhelmed. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's about partnership. The kind of simplistic statements about one person, one vote, equal shares. We've never, as a country, run on a principle of equal shares. We've always weighted things in favour of people who are in greater need. Mm. We have always done special arrangements about who gets to vote and who doesn't get to vote, how we allow people into certain places like universities, for example. Mm. Uh, we've, we've constantly been re-weighting the wheel in order to achieve not only justice but equity. Mm. That's what the search for equity is all about. It's about balancing and rebalancing, prioritising quotas, mm-hmm. uh, rearranging in order to achieve equity. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing new about this. But the problem is that you put that issue of equality alongside race and all the mythologies that go with race, and you've got a really volatile debate going on. And so much of it is simply based on misinformation. Mm -hmm. And the idea that that Māori have more rights Mm -hmm. is is simply not the record. The record is they have different rights. Mm -hmm. And we live with those differences. That's what Mm -hmm. co-governance is is about. And and even governance is probably not the best word for it. It's it's more to do with co-management. It's about working out systems Mm -hmm. that do ensure we get equity. Mm -hmm. So from your example, like with the Anglican Church, the example you Mm -hmm. gave, how does does co-governance, what's an example of co-governance working well from your experience in in the Anglican Church? The way in which General Synod works. 
which is the governing body of the church. Every two years it meets. And in order to pass any motion, to spend any money, to make any decision, you have to have the support not only of the three houses of the church, the bishops, the clergy, and the lay people, you also have to have the support of each of the tikanga. Now that sounds like... Tikanga being Māori, Pacific... Pacifica and Pākehā. And um, three cultural pathways, if you like. Mm. And those three groups each have an equal vote. Now, that sounds on the face of it like an enormous complication. Mm. Aren't you going to make things even more difficult? In fact, what happens is it forces conversation. It forces negotiation. It produces compromise. Mm. It produces decisions where everybody buys in so that when the actual vote comes, the homework has been done. Mm. So in a sense, it's a way of um, hearing what might be minority voices and, and integrating them into a, into a much more consensus way of, of decision-making rather than a simple majority, we're right, you're wrong, uh, move on to the next business. Exactly. Mm.